welcome back to the channel today I am going to make just a basic wreath good for all year long so what I'm going to use is some nautical rope I'm going to do the wrap method instead of the weave the weave I like it much better the look of it but it takes forever but I just want to use the wrap method when I uh, do this wreath this is on a 14 inch base. I got it at Dollar Tree for $1.25. And I'm going to use these three ribbons. So my colors are going to be green, white, and yellow. Now y'all, y'all know how I like to chat sometimes. Some videos I won't say a word, other ones I won't shut up. This is probably going to be one of the ones where I don't shut up. My last wreath that I did, uh, the nautical wreath, is holding up really nice. It's on the warehouse door, and all the pieces are on there. The color looks great still. I'm very happy with that. It's been out there for about two weeks, so it's looking good. Now this nautical rope here is nine and a half inches, nine and a half. The tags are different, but they're $1.25. Um, at Dollar Tree and they're both nine and a half feet. I said inches before I think nine and a half feet. So uh, a few things have been going on with me y'all. Uh, I've been busy, started a new job and it is full-blown summertime now so it gets hot down here. Uh, if y'all didn't catch the last video, I'm going to be uploading on Fridays at 1 p.m. All the fall stuff has started to come out at Hobby Lobby and the discounts. And I will be taking all my fall inventory out that I got from last that I got last year. Um, when it was on clearance and just extra stuff that I got. It's up in the loft, so I'll be taking that down soon. And I'm thinking in August I'll start working on a bunch of different fall um, fall decor and wreaths and all that good stuff and also for the month of July I think I'll probably make a few wreaths but I'm going to do some sewing projects uh, for July I haven't did any sewing in a while and I want to make sure I still got it <laughs> but Here's the wreath frame, and what I'm going to do is I always hot glue the start and then I go. So I have six nautical rope bundles here. I have a few more over there in case I need more. I've never wrapped a wreath with nautical rope before, so I'm not sure how many I'll need, but I've weaved them in. I think about seven was enough to weave it. So what I'm going to do. I'm letting my Gorilla Glue heat up and I'm just to wrap this bad boy up. So, turn this over and start right here. But y'all, I went back to work last week. It's been a while. It's been a long while. I went back to my old job, not the one that I was on uh, last, but back at my job, I've been there. <laughs> I went back there like three of this is my fourth time back there like why do you keep leaving because I don't be knowing I'm going back <laughs> but I'm back again I was just up one night you know just thinking about all this stuff and I was like you know what I need some ugh, I need something a little more consistent and steady when it comes to pay so let me let me see if they're hiring they're not too far from my house and I knew the job I know the area somewhat don't know Dallas worth a lick but Fort Worth area I know that pretty well so I had just heated up the glue so it's not really hot hot so let me give that a few more minutes so I can get it hot hot so 
this will stay down real good but went back there did the whole process the orientation and training just got out of training I finished that on Monday worked by myself on Tuesday horrible day horrible awful terrible day I kept getting lost um, and all the app and computer works takes forever but one of the dispatchers he was like you're new you're gonna have to just learn the customers you'll get it it might take you a couple of weeks and all that I'm like yeah but it's just beyond frustrating when you don't know where you're going <laughs> in a semi and you do not want to go down uh, do not go down road as in trucks are not allowed or low clearance or residential area with cops sitting on the corners just waiting to write a ticket <laughs> they see dollar signs when they see commercial vehicles doing something wrong but it was, it was a bunch of mess I mean a bunch of mess end up doing like 12 and a half hour a day I was beyond tired I didn't get home until like after 4 in the morning <laughs> Also, y'all, my dog lady, she's warming up to me a little bit. Hey, it took over eight years, but <laughs> better late than never. So, Lucky's been gone for almost three months, and she still, like, infuriates me when I'm coming home, my husband's coming home, somebody knocks on the door. And she's not running to the door barking to let me know somebody's coming in the house, somebody's here. But for some reason, most of the time when my husband comes near the door, or he'll say, hey, open the door, he'll call me. I said, okay, she'll jump up and run to the door. Like, she know, yeah, I heard him call, I heard him say go to the door, I can't wait to see him, so let me go on and greet him. Like... <laughs> She's smart. I just think she doesn't. I'm like, I don't feel like getting up. And that makes me mad. You're a dog. You got one job. Bark or go to the door and let me know when somebody's there. <laughs> so, we're still working on that. I'd be like, you can't teach no old dogs new trick. My husband's like, yes, you can. Yes, you can. She'll learn. Now, Lucky, no problem. She would always follow him. She was a follower. She was younger. We had him like for four years before she came along and basically he was her role model but since he's been gone it's like she completely forgot everything he taught her but we got we got hope still for her. speaking of dogs this doesn't feel that hot yet okay speaking of dogs y'all i got a story for you a few weeks ago, I was supposed to go down to Fort Worth to visit mom, go do a little shopping, go to lunch, all that good stuff. When I was pulling out of my driveway, I was going down the street in my neighborhood, and I saw this little, like, shaggy dog going across the street, taking his sweet time. I blew my horn, and it kind of ran a little bit and stopped in the street and looked at me. Well, it was a little dog. It had a collar on with tags and everything. So I opened my door, I pulled over, I opened my door, and I was like, come here, come here. And uh, she walked up to me, and I was petting her, and I picked her up, and I was looking at her collar. So I called the number, somebody had like scratched in their name and phone number on the back of her little tag. And I called them, I left a voice message, hey, I found your dog, she's in the middle of the road. You know, um, she looks thirsty. I don't want to get her hit by a car, so I'm going to try to, you know, get some help for her. So I look on the front of the tag and had the vet that she went to. So I called the vet, told them, hey, I found this dog. Um, she got tags. The last one was 2022. She's shaggy. She's dirty. She had little sticker bugs in her fur. And... I wasn't sure if somebody was taking care of her currently or if she was a stray that, you know, got away from the owner 
a while back and had been living, you know, out on the streets in the country, you know, whatever. Because she was dirty and she was roaming free and the tax, you know, the rabies tag was from 2022. There was no current tag on it. This is 2024. So I gave the information to the lady on the phone and she was like, well, let me look. I have to do everything by hand. We, we're not computerized. So I'm going to uh, look and try to see if I can find her tag and get the information to the owner and all that stuff. I'm like, okay. So I'm holding, I'm holding. About 20 minutes go by. So I GPS, you know, the vet. And I head on down towards the vet. So she finally was like, I'm still looking, I'm still looking. I said, you know what, I'll be there, you know, in a few minutes. I'll be there in a few minutes uh, and drop her off with y'all because I have to go. No, no, do not bring her here. Ma'am, do not bring her here. We cannot take care of a dog here. They're a vet, so I guess they just patch them up and send them on their way. I'm like, okay, what do you want me to do to her, do with them? She said, just Google Wise County, you know, uh, animal shelters. I said, okay. So I Googled one and one came up, you know, uh, not too far away. So I detour, you know, go over there. And when I get there, they're like, um, are you in the city or out the city? I said, I'm in Wise County, you know, um, I don't live too far from here. She said, because there's another one if you're out of the city that you can take her to over. I said, I have to go. And the lady told me to bring her, you know, to Wise County Shelter. And this is the shelter. She's like, uh, what lady? I said, the vet. I called the uh, dog's vet. They said they couldn't take care of them to bring them over here. So I brought her here. I have to go. She said, okay, then. So I uh, gave her my license and uh, I sat outside for a minute. She basically got her. Um, uh, she said she was going to check to see if she was chipped and she had a, a kennel outside on the porch in the shade and, you know, she, uh, gave her some water because she wouldn't drink water when I was trying to give it to her. And then I, um, uh, and then I left. Well, when I had got down the street, I think I pulled over at the gas station or something and the owner had texted me and I'm like, oh, I said she texts back. Well, I'll let her know where her dog is. Y'all, I had to screenshot this. Let me tell you. Let me, let me tell you. So I left her a voice message and she texted me back. She said, if you'll leave her alone, she'll go home 100% of the time. Now, when I was on the phone with the vet and heading over to the uh, vet, she texted me. I didn't see it. I was driving, trying to make sure the dog wasn't trying to pee or poop in my car. And I was waiting on the vet to get back to me, so I didn't see the text. So I sent her a message after she said, if you'll just leave her alone, she'll go home 100% of the time. And I texted her back about, she sent that at 11.08. At 11.26, I said, I dropped her off at the Wise County Animal Shelter down FM 51. So she texts me back, my God, can you people just mind your own business? That dog ain't hurting anyone. She's 15 years old. I'm in Puerto Rico, so later when my son comes to feed her, he'll have to be stuck with a problem you created. Leave my dog alone. So I said, your dog was in the middle of the road on a hot summer's day. Filthy with sticker bugs in its fur. Thirsty. I try to contact you and take her to a safe place. And this is what you say to me? Mind blown. You're welcome. Then I blocked her. Now. Now let's, let, let's go over this a little bit. Let's go over this a little bit. If you had a 15 year old little dog. And your dog got off of your property. Out of your house. Whatever. And was roaming the streets on a hot summer day. And the person who contacts you. Who almost runs her over. Because she's going across the street. In the middle of the road. And say hey I got them. Took them to a safe place. Would you come back with an attitude. 
accused and saying, leave them alone. In my neighborhood, a lot of people up there be in their yards, be in their garages, in their driveways with their dogs, big dogs, no leashes. No leashes at all. They just, you know, the dog follows the owner around. They're on their property. They don't. They, they don't bother putting a leash on them. There was a black dog in that neighborhood. Me and my husband was trying to catch it because it was freezing cold. It was sleeting. The dog was shivering. We was trying to catch it, take it to the vet, get it warm, all that. It took off down the road. Well, one of the neighbors had a German Shepherd follow him around, saw the dog, took off after the dog. So the dog was going full speed. The German Shepherd was behind her on her tail, and we were in the truck chasing the German Shepherd. I'm screaming at the German Shepherd, stop, stop, leave her alone, leave her alone. He finally stopped and looked at me like, what? And I'm like, go home, go home. So he turned around, went back home about seven houses down. Mind you, this ain't no little, you know, cookie cutter neighborhood where the houses are this close. We're out in the country and we got some land out there. So he ran a ways chasing that dog, a ways chasing that dog. And he turned around and went back home. But this dog was a little bitty dog. I've seen coyotes out there. I've seen people speeding down the road. There's big dogs loose. Why would you want your dog on a hot summer's day that's 15 years old, that probably got all kinds of health problems out there trying to fend for themselves? That dog could have got ran over. A big dog could have attacked it. It could have had a heat stroke. But her thing, I'm in Puerto Rico. You, Leave my dog alone. You people can't mind your own business. If that dog would have ended up roadkill, she might not even care. Because how are you going to run off to Puerto Rico and say, well, my dog, my son come to check on him. So to me, it sounds like she threw the dog in the backyard and went to Puerto Rico and said, son, go check on the dog. And from the looks of the dog, nobody's been checking on it. As I said, the dog was filthy had sticker bugs, and she was panting. She could have been panting because she hadn't had water in a while or because, as I said, it was a hot summer's day. I, I told my sister and my pet sitter, who's my, my friend, um, I've been taking my dog to my pet sitter, Cassie, for, what, over 10 years now? And Cassie had some choice words about the situation. And my sister was like, that don't make no sense. She just left that dog out there and went out of country. If somebody found my dog wandering around the streets, my small dog especially, and they took him to a safe place, I'll be like, thank you so much. I'm glad, you know, you found her. I've been really upset if I would have lost her or she got hit by a car or anything. But not this woman. You people need to mind your own business. Y'all, y'all feel like I should have minded my own business and left the little dog in the street on a hot summer day who was old and filthy and no telling when she had any water last? Or should I have done what I done? Mind you, if I see, if I see the little dog again, I most definitely would take her back to the uh, shelter and let them know the second time I done found this dog running around. Y'all might want to look into the owner. You don't leave your dog out on a hot summer's day like that to roam neighborhoods. You just don't. You just freaking don't. It's crazy. Now, I'm not the type that's like, oh, all dogs should be in a house and they need to be pampered. No. Some dogs, they outdoor dogs. There's some uh, dogs when you're leaving out of my little neighborhood. There's uh, some real land out there where they got uh, goats and um, two Two big, white, fluffy. They, they work dogs, basically. They tend to the, to the flock. Because they have a bunch of goats out there. And all they do is, you know, sit under the trees, watch the goats, make sure the goats stay in their area. They work dogs. When we go out there, they're out there every day. You know, all seasons, all weather. You know, they got a big, like, born thing where the animals go when it's, you know, cold, rainy. But they outdoor. They work dogs. That's fine. Little chihuahuas little 
you know, French bulldogs and tiny little dogs. They're not outdoor dogs. They're not. If you have been a German Shepherd or a Husky or Rottweiler or Pitbull or whatever, those dogs staying outside, you know, dog house food, water shape, they outdoor dogs. That's fine. Whatever. You do you. They on your property. You do you. This little dog's just roaming the neighborhood and no telling the last time the little the little little baby had any water or anything. It's ridiculous. That's crazy. Some people should not have pets. Now y'all, what I'm doing, I'm wrapping, gluing, wrapping, gluing. But I'm thinking I just wanted to get a good uh good hold on it starting out, but I'm just gonna wrap and scrunch now. And when I get to the end, I'm going to scrunch it so. I'm just gonna do this. And then I'm gonna scrunch it all down. But y'all. Was I wrong? Y'all think I was wrong that I should have just left the dog like, oh well, it is what it is. Or should I have done what I did and took her to the shelter so she wouldn't get hit by a freaking car or have a heat stroke? It's crazy. Some people... I'm going to cut this little plastic piece off right here. And glue this right here. And then I'm going to start again. But, oh, y'all, that was my little adventure with the little pooch. The last dog I found in my neighborhood was blue. Not the color blue. The dog's name ended up being blue. And I was in my driveway. And he walked up behind me. And I put him in my backyard. And a, st a ice storm was coming through. And called around to animal shelters and beds and stuff. Of course, it was on the weekend. And after he started howling, after I fed him, gave him some water, he was in the backyard. I was trying to figure out what I was going to do with him since nobody wanted to help uh, the animal shelter that I used to donate to. Didn't even return my call or my text. Wise County was like, oh, keep him till Monday and then someone can come get him. And he didn't have a tag on. But gave him food, water, put him in the backyard. And he just started howling. And I told my neighbor what was going on. She said, yeah, he's he's just howling. Uh, maybe he can, uh, maybe he would find, she said something along the lines of, he wants to go home. And I was like, hmm, dogs are smart. If I put him on a leash and just let him leave me, I bet he would take me to his house. <laughs> so I put him on a leash. He was walking. We went to the end of the driveway. I said, which way you want to go? I don't know where you stay. So he went left. We walked down to the corner. I said, I don't know the way. He took another left. We walked down the street. I went to the other side of the street. We walked down. And he was looking around. And then he stopped. And he started looking at me. I was like, what? And then he started walking up a driveway across the street. And I'm like, huh. Then he started licking and, you know, scratching at the door. I'm like, this is his house. And I was just ringing the doorbell. And she was like, oh, thank you for bringing Lou home. My neighbor, I just called her. She's going to come over and let him in. And I'm like, okay. Ha, found, <laughs> found his house. The neighbor came over. Oh, he always gets out and 
oh, thank you for bringing them back. Can I give you a ride home? And I was like, no, I need to get some exercise because my doctor had just told me I need to start walking, you know, for my foot because my foot had been messed up for a while. So she let him in the garage and that was the tail of blue. And he, he was back at home, happy as can be. And I was like, huh, I figured he'd know his way home. Most dogs do know their way home. That's what, another reason why usually my dogs, a uh, lady, when I had both of them, Lady and Lucky, I would try to take them for a walk. And it was just too much because Lucky hated the leash and he would like try to drag me where he wanted to go. I hated that. And then Lady, she was much better on the leash than he was, but she would always try to run and play with him since since he was there and trying to run and play and walk and me getting tangled up I said okay y'all want to exercise go to the pet sitter run around the backyard I'm not doing this and then when my husband I'll be like take her I'll take him you stay either behind me or ahead of me because she likes to jump and play and he likes to pull but he would always try to walk next to me and talk so I'm still fighting now he's in the way and the two dogs playing and trying to run and all this so I said you know what no no more of the walking them either one or the other but not both together but since it's just lady now and I'm like, you know, she should get some fresh air. And in case she ever gets out the backyard, I'll start taking her different ways on our walk so she'll know, you know, how to get home. But then she start, you know, walking slow and out of breath. And I'm like, she is, she's eight years old. And maybe she just out of shape or maybe she just tired and all that and he was like my husband he was like oh she's um she's tired maybe you shouldn't walk her every day so after that i like walked her like in the morning and then it got too hot and i was like she can go in the backyard and pet sit her no more walks until it cools down because i always felt like when you're taking dogs for a walk and the asphalt is hot, I know they got those little pads on the bottom of their feet, but dang, if it's too hot, I'm like, that's not going to help. It's like walking barefoot on cement. You can do it for a little bit, but that stuff is hot. No. So when it cools down, I'm going to continue my walks with her. And y'all, let me go ahead. I'm going to speed this up and show y'all what this is looking like once I finish it. So, I'll be back when I finish this. Okay. It is completely wrapped. And it took about nine of the nine and a half foot uh, nautical ropes to wrap this completely. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off a piece of ribbon. I decided to add this one. This is like a burlap with lace. I'm gonna cut off a piece of this for the, for the hanger. So let me go ahead and measure off about 24 you know what I'm going to do it like this first so I will know You 
let me go and try to find a different one because these colors are different and this one's bigger and I like that one. Okay, I couldn't find... Okay, I couldn't find any more of this. I'm out. This one here, the color is off. I don't... It's, I don't know, I just don't like this shade of the burlap for this for this wreath so I'm not gonna use this one this one is pretty I'm gonna use this one pieces at 24 of each of the ribbon. So it's one. So I wanted a big bow for this one. And two. So let me go ahead and finish cutting these and then I'll be right back. Chanel stem. Let me grab that. Okay, y'all. I'm going to make my bow. I want my loop to be about, let's see here. I want my loop to be about 7 inches, so I fold it over to the 15 inch mark, go up to the 14 inch mark, and scrunch. Just like this. And I'm going to do that the same for all of them. And here's the bundle. Get my zip tie. Make sure you put your Chanel stem in it before you tighten it up. So I just gather that up. And I pull it all together. Right there. Oh, there that goes. <laughs> And now it's time to fluff. Here's my bow. And now I'm going to attach it to the side. Let me go ahead and hang it up on the wall to give y'all a better view. Okay, everybody, and here it is. The finished product. Now, this was a simple wreath. The longest part was uh, wrapping the nautical rope, but you could also use a uh, ribbon if you wanted, which would probably be a little bit faster. But this is just a simple wreath uh, wrapped in nautical rope with the pretty bow on it. So, let me give y'all a close up.
So if y'all have any comments or questions, drop them below. Please subscribe, turn on that notification bell. I know, shameless plug, and I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.